watching sunrise meets my skin. Even with my eyes still closed, I can feel it coming in. Golden, I'll follow only golden, 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 golden things. Hi guys, good official morning. I'm sorry it's taken me so long to actually talk to you, but it has been quite the morning. Um, just to spare some details, Rocky got up at like 5.30 a.m. and we, he was crying, which he never does that, so we went in there and he had throw up and diarrhea all over his crib. So he didn't go back to sleep, so I tried laying with him. Everything has just been kind of like off today. I have a very limited amount of time to talk to you guys and then I have to go to an appointment and Rocky needs to go down for a nap. So if I'm rushed, <laughs> I apologize, but that is why. As you can see from the title today, I'm sharing what I eat in a day pregnant with gestational diabetes. And I really want to explain like how I am able to manage it and enjoy life. If you guys are new here, I am pregnant for the second time and this is my second time getting gestational diabetes. Both times I have been able to manage it through just my nutrition. I haven't needed insulin or anything. And so I really wanted to share some information with you guys because when I got my diagnosis the first time, I swear I had such a hard time finding information about it, let alone people even sharing the fact that they had it. And when I did share it, so many people reached out to me and was like, oh, I had that too. And I'm like, people need to know that it's normal and it's not like your fault and yeah so I also wanted to explain if you don't know because when I got the diagnosis my doctor did not tell me this I had to do a lot of research to understand like why this was happening in my body because I'm fairly healthy I have a background in nutrition um, I went to ASU for nutrition that's my major and I'm very active so I was just very confused why I had it and it actually has nothing to do with you and it has everything to do with your placenta. So when you're pregnant, your placenta will start to secrete things that mess with your insulin and your glucose levels. And so that is why it is only when you are pregnant, gestational, do you have diabetes and as soon as you give birth it goes away. So that was the case for me. Mine went away when I had Rocky and um, I got tested at eight weeks with this baby and I did not have it because my placenta wasn't developed enough and so it wasn't messing with my levels yet, but at 28 weeks I did have it. So if you guys don't know, please don't feel ashamed and don't make other people feel ashamed for having it. It's completely out of your control and you got this. It's gonna suck for a little bit. It's not fun poking your finger four times a day, but you can do it. And the great thing is, is there's an end date. Um, this isn't something like type one where you have it for the rest of your life, which my goodness, my heart goes out to you if you have type 1 diabetes or type 2. Like, I just, I can't. <laughs> I, like, the only thing that I hold on to is the fact that 
I only have X amount of weeks left. Throughout this video, I'm going to show you every single thing that I put into my body. I'm going to show you all of my readings. I know I've already done a couple for you guys already. And then I'm going to explain like how I kind of just like orchestrate a meal to make sure that it's not going to spike my levels. I'm going to explain how I don't get a fasted reading in the morning. That is the hardest one to manage. And so I'm going to share my tips on that. And then I'm just going to share like how I still enjoy life and I don't go crazy because you're basically dieting in your third trimester, which is honestly just so cruel. And so I just want to share how I'm able to still like enjoy some foods that I like, but keep my values regulated. I need to go to my doctor's appointment. If you guys missed the video where I announced that I had it, her fluid levels around her in my uterus, I believe, <laughs> are elevated. And so they wanted me to come back two weeks later to make sure that they had gone down and then they also want to check the weight of her so she was in the 95th percentile at 28 weeks weighing three pounds five ounces so i'm very curious to see what she is now and i'm going to just talk to them about my like plans or what they have planned for me because i kind of just like left the appointment they actually never called me for my blood glucose levels so i don't even know what my one hour was and they like said no mention of like a plan for anything so yes i'm gonna get some answers and i will share with you guys what they tell me I've been trying to do some things to move her. I, I didn't know if it would help. To write up a song for just Yay. anyone. I, I was always the one to find myself lost in all conversations. Oh, cause I've always been told that things will unfold if you keep on waiting. But then you came along and proved me all wrong. I was so mistaken. Cause you glue all the pieces back together. Yeah, you, you take all my wrongs and make them better. Yeah, you, you're making me wanna try forever I feel so free, oh my sweet baby I was never the one to give up the ghost, no I was so stuck I kept on playing my part, wanted to give up cause nothing was changing Target was so already flat. I just got back from my appointment. It was very reassuring. Everything is starting to look better. They did not measure the size of the baby, but they were most concerned about my fluid levels. Sorry, this lighting is kind of crazy. My fluid was 25.8 centimeters two weeks ago, and today was 24.3. So they were really excited that it went down in the right direction. So I have to go back in another two weeks for another ultrasound to make sure it's still going down. But from here on out, I'm at that point in pregnancy anyways, where I'm going to be going every two weeks. So yeah, I'm 30 weeks today. She is head down, which is super good. As you guys saw, I got some photos of her face this time. Not that I'm trying to lose weight by any means, but I weighed two pounds less this time. So I feel like what I'm doing is like kind of helping regulate my body a little bit. Yeah, I think that was basically it. I told her that I did not want to be induced because my induction process with Rocky was just like so forced. And she said she did not want to induce me either. They're not worried about the baby's weight. The only thing that they would be worried about is the fluid in my stomach because it can cause problems if my water breaks on its own. Uh, so as long as we just keep that under control, then everything is good to go. So she said everything that I've been doing in the past two weeks is good, just keep doing that. I am going to sit and eat this turkey wrap before any of you guys freak out. I heated up the turkey meat so that way it doesn't give me a virus or bacteria or whatever. But this with cheese and pepperonis and ranch has been super good. And then just like a side of blueberries. Sometimes if I don't have a uh, boiled egg, I'll have an egg with this as well or a cutie and then a lot of times I have like a protein bar but I was out so that's why I had an egg and a cutie. But yeah, I kinda just go with the flow. So, all right you guys, while I'm waiting the hour <laughs> before I have to check my blood, I wanna share with you guys my best tips and tricks of how to help regulate your blood sugar without having to take insulin. Now I just wanna kinda preface this that this may not work for your body and you may just have to be on insulin. Everybody is different, but these are the ways that have helped me stay off of it. So I'm hoping that it can help you too. Also, if you're unaware, when you have gestational diabetes, you have to check your blood four times. You have to do fasted an hour after breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And uh, you're allowed snacks in between but your numbers have to be below 140 after an hour of eating. So once I finish, I look at the clock. It was 1.30 today, so at 2.30 I have to check again. 
And then for fasted, it has to be below 95. So those are the goals that you're trying to hit. But yeah, for each meal, what I try to do is I try to shoot for about 30 carbs per meal. That is what I have noticed has worked well with my body. You may have to kind of adjust and see what works well for yours. It may be more, it may be less, but I know for sure I wanna stay below 40 because 50 is the amount of carbs or sugars that were in the glucose test. And that is what I failed. So I try to shoot for about 30. And if you guys don't know how to track your food or know what entails of 30 carbs, I highly suggest getting a food scale so that you can weigh out how much you're eating or measure out how much you're eating and using my fitness pal. And you can literally just scan the food. If you enter how much you are consuming, it'll tell you how many carbs it is. And I feel like this is super helpful because you may have something where you think you're only getting carbs from, like for an example, if you're having a Mexican bowl, you may think you're only getting carbs from rice, but beans actually have carbs too. So you could be having multiple things that are carb sources and not realize it. So if you're new, I highly recommend doing that. I have tracked my food so many times. Despite having gestational diabetes, I have done macro counting for so many years. So I just kind of eyeball things now. But if you're new, I highly suggest doing that because I think that'll help you quite a bit. And then with that, I try to make sure I have at least 15 to 20 grams of protein. That is something that really helps regulate my blood sugars. And it's really good for you too. So protein sources can be eggs, meat, um, you saw I had deli meat, cook it so you don't get sick, chicken, ground turkey, you can do shrimp, um, you can do other things like steak and stuff like that too, but we typically just have chicken, ground turkey, and shrimp. Uh, another thing that I try to make sure that I put into my meals when I can is fiber. Like you saw my parfait this morning had chia seeds. So sources of fiber are typically seeds like chia or hemp or flax. Fiber helps pull sugar out of your bloodstream. So if you guys ever see things that have like net carbs, it's because you take the total amount of carbs and you subtract how many grams of fiber you have and that's like what's left over. That's what that kind of means. And so fiber is always a good thing to add as well. The next thing that I think is super important is drinking a ton of water, which you guys know drinking water is important whether you have gestational diabetes or not, especially if you're pregnant, but it really helps to just kind of flush everything out of your bloodstream when you do have gestational diabetes. So I always have a water bottle with me. You guys will probably always see in my vlogs, I'm carrying it room to room. That's what really helps me remember to consume water because sometimes you literally just forget. But if you're constantly bringing a water bottle into each room, then you're more likely to consume more water. Um, I personally try to consume at least half my body weight in ounces, but I always try to shoot for like a gallon. If I could get in a gallon, that is great. It's super good to drink that much water, which all of that brings me to a little giveaway for you guys. So you guys know I've teamed up with Epic Water Filters in the past. If you guys have been religious followers of my channel and they want to give you guys a water bottle of any size you can choose. This is the 48 ounce and I have it all the way down to the 20 ounce one, which is the one that Rocky uses and it comes with a filter, which is the most important part because this is what is going to filter your water and make it so that your contaminants or toxins are out of it. So you can literally fill this up anywhere. Um, I always use my tap water, which here in Arizona, we don't drink tap water because it's not filtered, but with this little filter, we're able to do so and it clears out 99.99% .99 of contaminants in water, which is great, especially when you're pregnant. I mean, it's great alone but you've got a growing baby inside of you. You wanna make sure the water you're consuming is free of toxins. Nathaniel has his own water bottle. Rocky has two of his own. We literally carry them everywhere and we're just obsessed. We also have the fridge filter so that way I can use any cup in the house and not have to worry about it. So we are just huge fans over here and I'm really excited that one of you guys gets to try it out. So if you want to enter the giveaway, all you have to do is comment below what clean water means to you or why it's important to you and I will pick someone within the next 48 hours to win a water bottle of their choice. Okay, but yes, let's get back into my little tips. So the other thing I'm sure you guys noticed if you've watched any of my other what I eat in a days is normally I start my day off with coffee and that is just not something that I do anymore. I honestly haven't tried to do that and then check my blood. I just know that my coffee is very high sugar and so I've just, 
completely skipped it. That part is really crappy because I really like waking up and having coffee, but if you want to have coffee, you can choose to have it as like one of your snacks. The biggest thing that makes me be able to drink it is spacing it out from my meals that have that 30 grams of carbs. So the biggest thing is just having too many carbs at once. So if you want a coffee, you can totally have one like an hour or so after. I would suggest though making sure it's a little bit of a better coffee. Don't go for like a frappuccino or anything that's like super heavy and don't get a big one. You got to get a small one too, but it's a way that you can still consume it if you'd like. If you don't want to do that, there's so many other options for caffeine. As long as you stay below the 200 milligrams that's recommended for pregnancy, then there's a bunch of drinks that you can try too. I try not to consume too much uh, of my calories from my drinks. The only thing that I do drink is an Olipop, which has fiber in it as well. So that kind of has that whole net carb effect. But sometimes during the day or at the end of the day, that kind of helps me like kick my sweet tooth. So just find a drink. You have to look at the labels for sure to make sure that there's not any hidden sugars or carbs in them. Okay, another thing that helps me a ton is walking or staying active. So you guys saw this morning after breakfast, I took a walk. I also always take a walk pretty much every night after dinner. It's nothing crazy. We literally just do a big loop in our neighborhood. I would say it's like half a mile at most. Probably not even that, but walking helps again, just burn through those carbs and sugars so that way it doesn't stay in your bloodstream. I have heard this helps people a ton. And so if you are noticing that your levels are high, and you can try and walk after each meal or at least do something active around your house. If you guys are like me, I have a toddler that I'm chasing around all the time, but sometimes that is just not enough. And so we'll go play outside or I will take him on a walk with me. But yeah, staying active is huge because sometimes like for lunch, especially if Rocky's asleep, I would just like sit and lay down and like chill for the whole hour. And so I literally didn't use any of those carbs and those are, gonna be some higher readings. So moving your body is so, so important um, to regulate your blood sugars as well. Okay, the last thing I wanted to touch on is snacks. The reasoning behind why I choose to snack is to help just regulate my sugar all throughout the day. So when you have your meals, it spikes your sugar and then it goes down within the hour. But if you don't eat again for a few hours, it's gonna spike quite a bit. Whereas if you continuously eat a little bit, it'll keep it more level and maintained. And so for my snacks, again, I still try and make sure that they're not like crazy carb and that they have a good source of protein in them. But that also helps me because the fact that I'm in my third trimester, I can't really eat big meals anyways, but that means I'm eating smaller frequent meals and I get hungry more often. And so this allows me to just like have smaller meals and not feel super full but also not be left feeling super hungry and waiting till the next meal the last tip i have i will share at the end of the day and that's with snacking after dinner but i'm going to check my blood in about 40 minutes and then we'll go from there salad duty i'm on pasta duty rocky is just doing whatever you want huh whatever the heck he wants i am going to make a shrimp pasta i really wish i had alfredo sauce but i don't so i'm gonna make a sauce from scratch which you guys know how that went last time so let's hope it goes better less lemon um, less lemon <laughs> you guys remember all of his hate on the lemon Good job, baby. Sorry, I was interrupting. It's okay. Hi. Hi. For dinner, I always eat whatever I planned on feeding the family anyway. Do you want to say hi? For dinner, I always eat whatever the family is eating. Don't shut the cabinet. No. I just portion out my carb to be a lot smaller than what I used to. Hey. Okay. You've got strawberries on the Hi. Do you want to go play with your kitchen? Do you want to play with your trains? <laughs> oh, cutie. I know it so well how I 
I'll always be by your side Cause you glue all the pieces back together Yeah, you, you take all my wrongs and make them better Yeah, you, you're making me wanna try forever I feel so free Oh, my sweet baby Dinner was really good. I definitely redeemed myself. The only person that did not like it was Rocky. So Nathaniel is making him potatoes, something that I really didn't want to do as a mom, make like multiple meals, but when your kid doesn't eat, it's stressful, huh? I kind of like winged that recipe, so I will try and like list it out and record what I did the best of my ability. But you guys have to try that because it was super good. Um, but I'm gonna sit here for like, 30 minutes and hang out because my legs are honestly hurting. I feel like I have like growing pains in my legs and then we're going to go on a walk and put Rocky down and then I'll share with you guys my night snack and just like how I keep my fasted levels from being high. I love you. Cause you glue all the pieces back together Yeah you, you take all my and make yeah, them better Yeah you, you're making me want to try for <laughs> this is almost how every night ends over here. My snack of choice tonight is strawberries, Nutella, and a protein brownie from Kodiak Cakes. I wanted to share my tips of how I keep my fasted levels low if i'm being completely honest with rocky's pregnancy i didn't know that this was helping but i always had a dessert after dinner and i always had a low fasted number and honestly at that point it was just like i didn't have to check my blood for 12 hours i figured it would go down if the goal throughout the whole day was to go down within an hour and so when i got it again this time i talked to my PA about it and she was like oh yeah like it's good to have a snack after dinner because your levels drop so low throughout the night that your liver will shoot out stored glucose which is called glucagon and it'll spike your levels so when you wake up they'll be high basically because they got too low so if you guys have had high fasted numbers I encourage you to try having a snack and for me I don't care about the protein content like I literally just eat when I want sometimes it's chips Sometimes it's ice cream. Sometimes it's just fruit and Nutella. It really just kind of depends. Of course, I'm not eating like a crazy, crazy amount each night of all of that, but I will allow myself a little bit to just kind of like feel normal and make it through this pregnancy. Again, I'm not a doctor, so do what you want to do. This may not work for you, but I hope it does because it's it just helps me so much just get through the day. But yeah, if it does spike you, try messing with this meal. Try adding in more protein, try adding in fat, try changing the amount that you're having. I don't know, just kind of mess with it before you give up and know that you need insulin because I've talked to a few of you guys who have said that your nutritionist like pushed insulin, which is so sad to me that they wouldn't like encourage you to try and do it on your own first so just mess around with things if you have one high reading here and there it's not a big deal give yourself so much grace you're doing a lot but yeah i hope that you guys enjoyed today's video and it was really helpful for you if you have any go-to meals let me know down below because for me i cook like the same things i'm sure you guys can tell if you watch my videos often but also i'm sure there's so many other people who may not like shrimp or turkey or whatever and are just looking for other ideas too so help each other out in the comments and also don't forget to enter that giveaway if you guys want to win a water bottle um, i swear it's such a great company and you guys are gonna love it so yeah make sure you leave a comment for that and i'll see you guys in the next one bye guys